Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. And we're going to have some fun in the month of October. Of course, we'll have lots of fun at the end of October when Halloween comes. But for right now, we're going to talk about Latin, which is the language that the Romans spoke when the Roman Empire was at its height. But we still use Latin in our daily conversations. We have hidden Latin in our daily conversations. We use it all the time. We may not even know we we are. You'll use it a lot in some fields of work.、Uh, for example, in law, a lot of terms are straight Latin, and so you have to、uh, memorize a lot of new terms if you're going to be a lawyer. I know in some of the science fields they use a lot of Latin, so we're going to talk about that. But as far as it being a language that's spoken today, it's not spoken anymore. So you're going to see this phrase, a dead language. Uh, towards the end of the article, that's the the last sentence there. It really is a dead language because it's not spoken and passed down from generation to generation. But we have a lot of words that either、uh, come from Latin itself, especially the Romance languages like Italian and French and Spanish. But we also use a lot of Latin、uh, terms in、uh, different fields. Also, I, I was telling Tom before we started. Uh, a lot of the choral music from long ago、uh, is written in Latin, and so I got used to singing in Latin. But yeah, what, nobody speaks it. But it's a great language to learn if you want to increase your vocabulary,、uh, because you can guess at the meaning of some of the English words in particular if you see a Latin root. I took a class when I was a freshman about、um, vocabulary, and it was studying Latin. It was kind of、uh, it was very useful. Right, so of course today we're going to be focusing on abbreviations more specifically, but we will mention some other Latin phrases that we use in daily conversation as our lesson continues. So let's get to it, everybody. Let's read the entire contents of the lesson right now, and we'll come right back. Have you ever encountered abbreviations like VS or AM and thought about their origins or pronunciation? These terms are leftovers of ancient Latin. For centuries, no one has claimed Latin as their mother tongue. Yet many of us unknowingly use this language daily. Let's explore three common Latin terms used in everything from casual chats to formal documents. E T C, short for etc. E T C translates to and the remaining things. And is among the most frequently employed Latin abbreviations. It's a handy way to shorten a long list in writing or speech. Given that cetera conveys the notion of non-living objects, etc. is typically used for items. You can utilize it when mentioning several examples without completely listing every possibility. For instance, in discussing cooking preferences, one might declare. I adore pasta, seafood, risotto, etc. P.S. Postscript or P.S. adds an afterthought or extra information after a message's conclusion. It derives from the Latin post scriptum, meaning written afterward. This addition is vital for incorporating elements possibly omitted from the principal message. For example, after concluding an email invitation for a road trip. One might add, "P.S. Don't forget to bring snacks for the journey." CV. CV stands for Curriculum Vitae, which literally means "course of life." It's a detailed document of one's educational and professional experiences, and is primarily used when applying for jobs or academic positions, and is also called a resume. A student applying for a university scholarship might remark, "I must update my CV to include my recent accomplishments." By adopting these classic abbreviations in your language, you can communicate your meaning with a little extra class and give a little more life to a dead language. Okay, guys, let's dive in. Have you ever encountered or come across or run a, run across abbreviations like verses or AM?、Um, when we see this VS, it's usually because there are two opposite sides who are opposed to each other. It could be a sporting event, 
you know, the Red Sox versus the Yankees, or maybe you're in court and someone is suing you. So maybe it's the government versus、uh, a citizen's name. Maybe they've done something illegal. So you see this, it just means versus. And if you spell it out as a full word, it would be V E R S U S, versus. But、uh, we don't say V S. Be careful with that. It's just versus. And then A M. What's A M, Tom?、Uh, A M, interesting. What does that mean?、Uh, Anno Domino or something like that? I know that's wrong, but basically, I think it means before noon. Uh, PM, of course, is afternoon. And because we're teaching this lesson, I have to know the actual Latin. Most people don't. Everybody knows AM just means before noon. But just in case you wanted to know, it's ante meridium. I hope I said that right. That's the Latin there. But again, nobody uses that. Maybe a couple of eggheads will know this as part of a trivia or something. They'll try to impress people at parties by knowing this. But Most people don't know this. We just know AM means before noon and PM means afternoon. Yeah, we might call those kind of people smarty pants or show offs.、Uh, they probably have really、um, amazing brains and they have a lot of time just to pick up this stuff when they're not、uh, too busy. They have、anyway. too much time on their hands. <laughs> I、yeah. think so. Yeah. So, have you ever encountered some of these abbreviations, shortened versions of a word? And thought, hey, where did that come from? Or how do I even say that? I want to mention one of our vocabulary words is pronunciation.、Um, I hear a lot of people, even Americans, will occasionally say pronunciation. That is incorrect. Wrong. So listen, pronunciation, pronun, not pronoun. Pronunciation. How do you say that word? Yeah, just think of a Catholic monastery, and there are nuns there, and they always say the words correctly, so they have. Proper pronunciation. The nuns always know how to say the words correctly. So indeed, we are talking about how words are said, how they're spoken, how they、mm-hmm. are pronounced. And of course,、uh, as、uh, stu- students of Chinese here, we have to study Chinese pronunciation all the time. We need to get the tones right, which can be difficult as well. But yeah, have you ever thought about where these words come from and how they're pronounced? Well, these terms are leftovers of ancient Latin. Latin is an ancient language. It's kind of a dead language. It's not really used anymore. I guess、uh, some people in the clergy and the Catholic Church still、oh, use、true. it.、Yeah. I don't think they use it as part of their daily conversations, though. But、uh, in any case, it's more or less a dead language. And of course, lots of people back in those days, many centuries ago, during the Roman Empire, they claimed it as their mother tongue. I'm imagining that in different parts of the Roman Empire, they had dialects. And different languages from different tribes and stuff like that, but the official language was Latin. So right now, though, for this particular unit, we're going to explore three common Latin terms used in everything from casual chats to formal documents. You're going to see these in a variety of different areas and places. So the first one is etc. or etc. or as some Americans frequently mispronounce, they say ek ek cetera. Etc. All right, I haven't et, heard that in a long time. Oh yeah, I was just, just watching TV. Etc.、Um, et et means and, so we're going to talk about etc. and what that means. It's short. The full word, if you wanted to print this out or even type it out, which you could if you want to, but no one does, is etc. I also wanted to mention when you use it in a document, guys, you have to put a period after the c. So etc. Period, okay.、Mm. Etc. Period, comma, and then you might might add some more things. So,、uh, what does this mean, Tom? Well, it means and the remaining things. Okay, so you add this at the end of a couple of terms you just named, and you're too lazy to mention the rest of them, and nobody has the patience to listen to the rest of them anyway. We'll give you an example in just a couple of seconds here, but again, et cetera translates to and the remaining things and the rest. So here we've got the word translate, which means you convert the meaning of of something in one language to another language. Okay, so what does the word run now translate to in English? Well, it kind of means busy, active, or something like that. That's how it translates. Yeah, so it's one of the most frequently employed or used Latin abbreviations. It's a handy way to shorten a long list in writing or speech. Yeah. Um, but I've noticed, though, Tom. Sometimes we record things, and、uh, the script will say
uh, et cetera. And I will always say it sounds better if you're actually speaking this out loud and it's mm-hmm. not just written to say and more. Right. <laughs> because et cetera sounds like, oh, I can't be bothered to give you more examples. Um, and so if you're actually speaking this out loud, I would uh, switch et cetera or ETC for and more. Um, but if you're writing it, you'll often see this in uh, formal research papers, uh, newspaper stories. We use ETC a lot, etc. I did want to mention that I think uh, that uh, problem you're mentioning there is because the Chinese term is dung dung, and they often translate that into etc. It doesn't work exactly the same. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So be careful there. Uh, it's best to list some list all the things you know about, and then just don't say etc. Because sometimes that's not specific enough, uh, especially if you're writing papers and things like that. It sounds a little a vague there. Let it you sounds know. lazy and vague both. Yeah, yeah, you don't really know what you're talking about, so you just oh etc. etc. I'm not going to be bothered to list those things here. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't have that function in Chinese, I understand. But in any case, that's what etc. means, and it's among the most frequently employed Latin abbreviations. Now it's a handy way to shorten a long list in writing or speech,、uh, as we said. Sometimes you have a lot of items you want to say, but、yeah. let me just say two or three of them, and then just say etc. Because you know what I mean. I don't need to say them all. And given that cetera conveys the notion of non-living objects, etc. is typically used for items or non-living things. I did not know that, but now that they mention it. It does seem to be used to talk about things and not people so much. Oh yeah, I, I had never even thought about that before. So that's very interesting. So cetera means items, things, non-living objects. You can utilize it, which just means how you use something when mentioning several examples without completely listing every single possibility, which might take forever. For instance, here's an example. In discussing cooking preferences, your preference is what you would prefer to do or what you would、um, choose to do more than any other thing.、Uh, if you're talking about ways of cooking, cooking preferences, one might declare or you might say, "I adore pasta, seafood, risotto, etc." So these are cooking preferences that this person is saying that they like. To adore something means to love it. Oh, I just adore that. You can adore something or a person. Or even a situation,、uh, and here these are all really tasty types of foods or dishes. Risotto, riso. If you take off the o t t o, riso itself in Italian means rice.、Okay. So it's a rice dish. It's cooked in stock, like chicken stock or beef stock, and it's not easy to get just right, but it's tasty. This word、uh, risotto is weird because that's how we say it in American English. But、uh-huh. uh, I guess I've been watching too many Gordon Ramsay cooking shows. And he says risotto all the time. He's wrong. He's British. Well, that's British. Yeah, in, <laughs> in Italian you're supposed to say risotto, but still it sounds、risotto. weird now. Yeah, it sounds weird to hear risotto now. Risotto sounds correct, <laughs>、uh, but I'm getting kind of confused there. But、uh, yeah, the Americans say risotto. Okay, that brings us to the midway point in our lesson for today. Stay tuned, and we'll come back to discuss PS and CV. Hello, everyone. 我是 Patrick 老师，今天讲解的是十月四号 Unit Four, The Hidden Latin in Your Daily Conversations. 不晓得大家有没有听过一种说法，拉丁文早就已经是死掉的语言，因为现在没有人会在平常生活当中使用。话虽如此，拉丁文对很多常见的欧洲语言，英文、法文、德文等等。还是有一定程度的影响，包括一些学术的用字，其实也都有拉丁文的字根。那此外，英文当中有许多常见的缩写，其实也是受到拉丁文影响。好，我们一起看文章内容，还有学习重点。请同学看到第一段的第一个句子。好 ，abbreviations， 请同学特别注意，指的就是缩写。像譬如说，这里看到的 vs， 或者我们一般会念 versus。或 a m 这些都是缩写。然后呢，文章第一个句子就问我们，文章第一个句子就问我们，大家有没有遇过这样子的缩写？那有没有想过这些字它的来源是什么 ？Origins 是什么？好，那我们看到第二个句子就给出答案了。These terms are leftovers of ancient Latin。好，所以这里 leftovers。
一般而言，我们常会说剩菜剩饭，你没有吃完的叫 leftovers。可这里当然不是剩菜剩饭，而是指什么东西所遗留下来的嘛。好，那是什么东西所遗留下来的影响呢？就是古拉丁文哦，古拉丁文所遗留下来的 leftovers。好，那第三个句子，我们看到。就好几百年来，其实已经没有人会说拉丁文是他们的母语了。No one has claimed Latin as their mother tongue. 他们不会这样子宣称，但是还是有一些实际的影响。那下面呢，就分别是好几个例子，我们一段一段来看。先看到第二段的第一个例子是 etc. 这个 e t c 呢，就念作 etc. 好，那我们来看。它所代表的是什么呢？这里第一个句子给我们的解释就是 ，etc. 代表 and the remaining things， 以及剩下来的这一些事物，也就我们中文会讲的等等。好，再来我们看到第二个句子 ，it's a handy way。好，所以这样子的写法呢，相当的方便。好，再来第三个句子，那。要请同学特别注意的就是 c e t r a 这个字哦，在拉丁文里面呢，它所传达的是没有具有生命的物体。好，所以这个 etc. 呢，就常常会用来列举一系列的物品。好，那我们看到第四个句子 ，you can utilize it。这里 utilize 其实就是等于 use， 你可以用它来讲呢一系列的。不同的东西，那在最后呢？你不再列举的时候，你就可以加上 etc. 好，所以我们看到第五个句子 etc. 使用的范例。那请同学看到，就像这边引号当中的句子 ，I adore pasta。这 adore 所指的就喜爱。那有一个形容词 adorable， 其实也跟这个字是相关的。I adore pasta, seafood, risotto, etc. 等等等，好，那就不再列举出来了。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. We're talking about the hidden Latin,、uh, a dead language, but one that we use in writing in your daily conversations. You probably didn't even understand or know that you were able to use Latin.、Uh, maybe you've used etc. before. Here's one that everybody knows, and that's P.S. Yeah,、mm. what does that mean, Tom? P.S. Well,、uh, that means postscript. Okay, and again, that's another thing that a lot of people don't actually know what it means. You're writing a letter to somebody, and at the end, you just write P.S. And we all know that means, hey, there's something else I want to say that I forgot to say in the letter. But actually, P.S. means postscript, and that adds an afterthought or extra information after a message's conclusion. Can you do that with emails? I suppose you can. I remember in the I do, yeah, in the handwritten letters. Of course, it was common. You got down to the end of your letter. Nice talking to you. Sincerely, Tom. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. P.S.、Uh, please remember to call my friend John. I forgot to tell you all about that. So that's what P.S. means.、Uh, additional information. It's an afterthought, which means something you thought about later, but you meant to think about it before. Yeah, it's funny because. Before we had computers and we had to either type or we had to use a pen or a pencil, it was such a pain to have to go back and rewrite everything to insert something you、mm. forgot. So P.S. was always really convenient, but now I think I think of it as just being kind of lazy. Yes, I put P.S.s,、uh, and I don't even know if that's the plural form, but P.S. at the end of an email because I don't want to have to go back and like reincorporate. That sentence or whatever I wanted to say in the body of the email, so I'll just put a P.S. at the bottom. But yeah, it's very, very handy, I must say. No one says postscript, so don't worry about that. Just remember, P.S. is just an extra little bit of information after you've concluded the main body of your message that you want to add. It derives or comes from derives from something means that's where it comes from. The Latin postscriptum. That's actual Latin right there, meaning written afterward, which makes a lot of sense. So this addition 
Uh, this little extra piece of information is vital or essential for incorporating elements possibly omitted or left out from the principal message. Exactly. So again, that's what PS means. And for example, after concluding an email invitation for a road trip, one might add, "P.S. Don't forget to bring snacks for the journey." Sometimes doing that in a letter makes it sound kind of interesting. You may have meant to leave off some information. And included it at the very end, as if to say you didn't really intend to say it at the beginning.、Uh, it's all part of a psychological process, which we can't really get into right now. But there you have it. P.S. Postscript. It just means we add information at the end of a letter. Before we move on, let's take a look at one more vocabulary word here. Incorporate.、Um, here is a verb incorporating something into something else. It means you put or take. Something and put it into something else as part of a whole. So maybe you have incorporated some of your research into your rough draft of your paper that's due at the end of the semester. So incorporate. So here we're not talking about setting up a business that you can、uh, run and make money from. That's a different incorporation. Here, incorporate again just means to take. Something and to insert it as part of a whole. So we're going to take that P.S. and incorporate elements that we missed or that we left out from the principal message or the body of the message that you've already written. Maybe you're writing a letter by hand. Wouldn't that be special? Or maybe it's a card, a birthday card. Sometimes I even forget things in birthday cards, and I'll write a P.S. at the bottom. You can write them wherever you want. It's a little more informal. I wouldn't put a P.S. on a formal document or a contract, you know, that I was uh, uh, setting up with a client. But you can do it with、uh, friends and even clients where it's not a formal document that you're putting your P.S. on. We use them all the time, though. Okay, so that's another Latin abbreviation. Let's move on now to another one called C.V. If you're a student and you're in university now, and you're about to graduate soon, and you want to start looking for a job, you need to know this term. Okay, CV stands for Curriculum Vitae, which literally means Course of Life. Okay, that's a document that has all your information on it: your name, your education, your experience, etc., etc.,、mm -hmm. your references. Uh, in, in American English, we say a resume.、Uh, they're basically the same thing, although somebody said, "Well, a CV is a little different from a resume." But for all intents and purposes, basically, they are the same thing.、Uh, I think a CV is more appropriate for、uh, an established professional, especially someone who is doing research work, and you have published research papers in、um, very top journals and top magazines in your field of study. Uh, maybe you're a scientist. I have a friend who has a PhD, and she is studying Korean music. When she publishes a book or an article for a very、um, well-respected magazine, that is that is added to her curriculum vitae. Or as Tom and I were laughing about this when we、uh, grew up, we always said vitae.、Mm. Um, so you're going to hear lots of different types of pronunciations. For this particular word, because a lot of people are confused, there's、uh, there's vitae, there's vitae is probably the most、um, often、uh, sourced, at least in dictionaries. But like I said, Tom and I both say vitae in real life, so、um, it's just a list of your accomplishments. But I would I would say for beginning workers or people who just graduated from school from college. You're you're actually doing a resume, not a curriculum vitae. I would kind of laugh at someone who said they had a CV and they were 22 and they just graduated. Hmm. Indeed. Okay. So yes, indeed, that's what a CV is.、Uh, it's your course of life, basically a list of all your accomplishments. And yes, it's a detailed document of one's educational and professional experiences, and is primarily used when applying for jobs or academic positions. And is also called a resume. You did point out the differences between those two kinds of documents.、Uh, yes, it lists your professional experiences. Okay, you may have some experience delivering newspapers or selling lemonade or something when you were a kid, but that's not really professional experience. You want to list something like 
Having worked at a trading company or something like that, or working in a law office, you want to list those as your professional experience, and as you said, maybe published papers or things like that. Or maybe you were an intern somewhere before you、uh, graduated with your bachelor's degree or master's or even PhD.、Uh, all of those would be things that you could put on your CV or your resume.、Um, here it says a student applying for a university scholarship might remark. Remark is a vocabulary word that just means to comment on something, right?、Uh, remark is more formal than comment. So you might say a student applying for a university scholarship might say or might comment or might remark. Remark is、uh, the more formal of those two of all those three words I just mentioned. Oh, I must update my CV to include my recent accomplishments. So yeah, you're going to want to put things that、um, look very、uh, impressive and also are professional. Don't be adding things that are a little silly. By adopting or using these classic abbreviations in your language, you can communicate your meaning with a little extra class. Oh yeah, people think, "Ooh, wow, they they're using some really、uh, high class words there, some difficult or advanced terminology." But it also will give a more life into your language, especially a dead language. Remember, Latin's considered dead language, but、uh, we do use it in our written work. And this is all very interesting, but、uh, I have a suspicion that most of our students are more interested in the abbreviations they use on the internet. A, a slang,、uh, right? Like、uh, you know, F Y I for your information,、yeah. L O L, laugh out loud, A K A, also known as etc.、Uh, that's a topic for another day. We have done programs on that, so you、oh, might want to look at have, some、yes. older programs. Yeah, indeed. And I should also mention that there are other phrases in Latin that are sometimes used. True. Like、uh, maybe you've heard "carpe diem,"、uh, "seize the day," or maybe、uh, "ad infinitum,"、uh, going on forever. There's a bunch of those、uh, that are used sometimes in English, but、uh, don't worry too much about those. I think you've got a pretty good start here with etc. and CV and PS.、Uh-huh. So there you go. That brings us to the end of our explanation for today. Let's turn things over now to our Chinese teacher. 好，下一个例子呢是 PS。好，那我们请同学呢，先看到第三个，第三个句子。好，那 P.S. 呢，它所代表的是复笔，也就是在主要讯息之后呢，如果你还有什么补充额外资讯呢，就是在这之后来写。This addition is vital for incorporating elements possibly omitted from the principal message. 好，所以这个 incorporating， 请同学画起来，它其实就是包含、包括。包括有一些要素，一些元素，你可能呢在主体里面、主文里面呢省略了。请同学把这个 omitted 这个 t 要重复哦，请特别注意把它圈起来。那再来呢，我们看到第四个段落 c v c v 这个字是代表什么呢 ？It stands for curriculum vitae。好，那字面的意思就是人生历程。到底什么是 CV？ 它其实呢是一个详述学经历的文件。根据我们第二个句子的解释，那有些时候呢，也有人会用这个字 resume。好，那我们看到第三个句子，要请同学特别注意的是，因为人生活得越久，你的经历也会越丰富。有时候呢，你必须要告诉你未来潜在的客户。让他知道说你的经历很丰富，那过一阵子呢，你就要把你新的经历加进去。这个动词应该要怎么说啊？到中文是更新履历，对不对？那英文就是 I must update my CV。I must update my CV。好，用的是 update 这个词。好啦，那在第五段呢，最后作者做一个总结了这些受到拉丁文所影响的这些缩写哦。其实使用起来很方便，那可以怎么样呢？有哪些效果呢？我们看到最后一个句子 ：You can communicate your meaning with a little extra class。根据作者的看法，他觉得呢，在读者看起来会觉得你比较有品味，你在传达意义的时候呢，传达你自己意思的时候呢，是比较有品味的。With a little extra class， 而且呢，也让。原本已经死掉的古拉丁文，又好像有了生命力，又活起来了。
and give a little more life to a dead language. 是的 ，dead language 指的当然就是前面所说的古拉丁文。好，以上就是我们针对这一篇课文内容所做的中文讲解。Thank you, everyone. I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us, guys. We hope you learned a little bit more today and you had some fun along the way. For English Digest, I'm Stephanie, and I'm Tom. Goodbye. Bye.